You have reached the Geek Elite. Good luck. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of VHS Gems, the podcast in which we open up a treasure box of VHS movies from the past and decide whether or not they're still shiny and awesome <laughs> or if they should just stay in the box. Um, I feel like for the one we're watching for this episode... Um, John and I definitely are conflicted in how we feel about this current movie. So, yep. We are watching Mom and Dad Save the World from 1992. And I loved it. <laughs> John, John, not so much. <laughs> you know, I don't know what it is about some of these movies but it's exactly the same situation that we had with stay tuned where i remember absolutely just going nuts for it originally and now i'm just uh -huh. like why did i like this? <laughs> this yeah this doesn't feel like it holds up and like i'm not sure why but i can definitely see a lot of its flaws more clearly now okay i mean this wasn't my first watch of it though i have seen this movie before and i remember liking this movie and i still liked it watching it okay how old were you the first old. time you watched this i honest i don't remember i don't okay i don't know i mean probably 10 maybe i don't know because i can't tell i mean it came out in 92 so i definitely didn't watch it then because i was two so yeah uh no but see i must I, I had to have been 11 or 12 when this came out i didn't watch this in theaters but i know i must have watched it on video probably back in the the vhs boom of the 90s um and yeah this was one of those movies that like the trailer makes you think it's going to be awesome it looks like a fun time um it just it has a lot of wacky stuff going on and i remember it thinking awesome. it was cool <laughs> back then but like just now i feel like it doesn't hold up there's there's too much about it that's too silly um but it does have a few parts that did make me laugh again on this rewatch and i thought were were worth it just for that alone and that has to do mainly with just the acting the the actor choices mm -hmm. that were made in a few parts uh, but we can definitely get a bit more into that. I did want to say that this was kind of a weird uh, reunion movie for a couple of actors. Um, this movie yeah. features Butnik, who is more famously known for being on the Nickelodeon show Hey Dude. No, not Hey Dude. Uh, Salute Your Shorts. The camping one. <laughs> the summer camp one. Oh, the, oh right. The, okay. the punky redhead kid with long hair. Mm. Um him and these two twins who I can't remember the names off the top of my head so I'm going to cheat real quick and just kind of briefly look them up on their IMDB page and they're not immediately visible but never mind there's the two twins that um, are like guards to the emperor whatever his name is and so those two twins uh, well that pair of twins and the little redhead kid also both were cast in Terminator 2. Wow. They were both in their... Um, in just small parts, kind of like with this one. They basically just had one scene for the most part. Oh, it was Dan and Don Stanton. They were credited as Twin Destroyer Stanton. 1 and 2. <laughs> and I I could look up Butnik, I suppose, but I don't see him right off here. Um, but yeah, it was just like a little brief uh, trivia to start off the conversation. Um, there were some Terminator 2 castings in here. And also, the older brother of Blossom from the TV show Blossom was in here okay. as the older daughter's boyfriend. But they feature so little into this that they could have just been cut out of the movie. It's called Mom and Dad Save the World, but you never like the kids never really know what's happening. Everything they find out is like after the fact. 
So I was like, yeah. oh, it's, it's not like stay tuned where they're more like in line with what's going on in real time. Like they just think the parents went on vacation. <laughs> well, it's also implied that, um, oh, what's his name? The king, King Raph, Eric. Oh, Eric Monty Idol. Python. Yeah, Eric Idol. Um, he's like kind of narrating it to the kids, it sounds like in the beginning. He's a narrator. So, narrator. He's the narrator. Um, the nar- narrator. In the beginning. And it sounds like he's, like, telling the kids how it happened. So, I thought, like, maybe it'd be, like, later on the kids are visiting the planet that yeah. mom and dad slaved Earth from. And then the king's, yeah, that, like, explaining the story I, in, like, I, a storybook. I guess, <laughs> yeah. Or maybe he just made, like, a propaganda video about his parents and sent them back with them. Because it ends with them showing them, like, slides of the vacation which I guess is the thing yeah. that people used to do is like, oh, this is where we went and had like a, a night of it just yeah, showing like your pictures. People probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like the upper middle class. Yeah, the lower the middle up, class. upper middle for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. What is this movie about exactly? <laughs> okay. So we'll just go through the movie, but it's, it's, I really hate that you said it, but it really is like a comedy version of Flash Gordon. Really? You're not wrong when it, you said that. It's like a spoof of it, yeah. It's like a spoof of it. Um, it starts out with Todd the Great and Powerful on the planet. I think it's called Sporgo. That's what I wrote on my notes. Yeah, Spango. And Spango. There you go, Spango, because that's his last name, Todd Spango. And um, who is played by a really great comedian. And I hope you know his name off the top of your head. Cause... John Lovitz, yeah. Thank you, John Lovitz. Yes. <laughs> Former SNL um, cast member. And he's been good in a lot of other movies, too. Like, he was great in The Rat Race. Um, he was oh, in yeah, Coneheads, I believe. Oh, yeah, he's just one of those former yeah. SNL people that just pops up here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, he has built a death ray on this planet, which is super far, far, far away. Oh, also should note this had like a Monty Python type opening where it's like a ancient Bible like book art representing the universe in a way. Yeah. Hopefully you understand what I'm trying to say from that. <laughs> like the artwork from Monty Python, but this is to represent the universe and where this planet Spargo is. It's like very Spargo, like whatever. simplistic yeah. 2D animation, basically. Yeah, but very cute. Very um, Book of Kelly, I get Not Book of Kelly. Book of Kells, like. There we go. Um, so he's he built a death ray on oh the other thing about this planet is that it's a planet of idiots <laughs> so i guess he's currently like a kind of smart idiot because he can invent things i think that's his thing so he took over the previous king um who is the one who's narrating for us and built a death ray and decided he's going to destroy earth because earth thinks it's so great even though Earth doesn't know that this other planet exists, um, he's uh, he just wants to destroy Earth. Before he decides to destroy Earth, though, he decides to spy on the area that they're going to target. And it's this little town in California. And there you have mom from the mom and dad. Her name is Marge. You find out later on her name is Marge. And she is doing some kind of exercising by her pool and very much i know this was early 90s but this is very much 80s fashion <laughs> exercising like jazzercisey with tiny little weights that she doesn't even really lift yeah it's adorable this is where you, like um, neon spandex neon spandex by the pool um and todd instantly falls in love with her and decides that he'll wait till tomorrow to destroy earth because he wants march because she's pretty there you go yeah that's your catalyst for the story that's that's the catalyst for the story um you find out that marge and the dad of the story whose name is dick um which I'd like to know if you listen to the last podcast, my mom <laughs> told me I wasn't allowed to say D head 
in the full sense because that's rude. So when I was watching the movie, because I kind of sort of try to watch these movies with her, <laughs> um, I was like, am I allowed to say dick on this podcast? <laughs> it's his name. <laughs> oh. And then she glared at me. It's like, you have to refer to him as Richard. <laughs> I know, right? No, they go by Dick. It's his name. <laughs> as long as I'm not cursing it. I mean, that's how he's but, credited, yeah. Yeah, he's credited as Dick. Uh, it's a name. Um, so they're showing, which this is where you get like the full circle thing. They're showing the kids, well, they're showing the daughter and her boyfriend um, pictures from their vacation in Mexico. And basically you learn that you know, Marge is like that go go getter, wants to go on an adventure, wants to try new things and all that. And Dick is kind of just like my back hurts. I'm old. I want to eat what I like to eat. I don't need to eat lengua. I don't know. Like <laughs> <laughs> like lengua tacos or um, He's he's the what you would call a yeah. wet blanket and in yeah. some ways he's my spiritual animal. Uh, yeah, basically, I was like, I'm, I'm really close, like, five more years, I probably will be Dick more than Marge, but, like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I hope not, I hope I stay Marge, but we'll see how that goes, but they're going on another vacation, because that's just, I assume they're retired, I don't know, that's what I'm on the assumption, they, even though they also have a younger kid as well, that's like, I don't know, 10, and he's a total skateboarding jerk, to his dad. I don't even remember his name because he literally had really no role other than to be a little jerk to his father. Because like Alan um, or something like that? Yeah, Alan. Um, and he... Yeah, they, they're they going to... What did they say they were going? California, right? Um, yeah, I think they were going to go to like wine country or something like that. Yeah, wine country, something like that. Santa Barbara. That's what it was. Santa Barbara. Um, I think. Ah, sounds right. That sounds um, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, they're driving to Santa Barbara, and then that's when Todd spies on them again and magnetically pulls up the car all the way through the universe <laughs> to planet Spargo, in which you get this really hilarious scene of, like, I mean, they're both freaking out, but Dick is freaking out a lot more. And Marge is, like, trying to take a picture of Dick and Planet Saturn in the background. It's just, like, they're just in their car. It's one of those old sedan things that everybody had to go on vacations in the 90s and 80s. <laughs> yeah, the family car. Upper middle class fa- yeah, upper middle class family car kind of go on vacations. Everybody fit in it. Um well, actually, no, I think that car was actually very affordable, but, um, yeah, they, they get magnetically pulled within a couple hours to this planet that is farther than the edge of our current universe, so, there we go. Science. Who needs it? <laughs> um, they get to the planet, and there's guards all around, um, I absolutely loved the set pieces of this. And maybe, I don't know, they do kind of remind me of those Disney-esque kind of set pieces where it's just like really over the top. Like it was like being in a Disney ride, kind of sort of just like fantasy element shouldn't really work as a machine, but like there's random gears in the walls and the magnet thing looks ridiculous and golden and it's just I don't know I like the set I like the costumes in this too um the guards wear these elaborate purpley costumes it's almost like renaissance style futuristic costumes yeah they look like they were exaggerations of like swiss guards yeah yeah basically um they get out of the car and Todd explains that they've been invited to a wedding <laughs> um, the wedding is going to be Todd and Marge's wedding they just don't know that yet but that's what they said so you they kind of walk together for a bit and this is where you run into the bulldog people and Marge gets a picture with the bulldog people which is exactly what it sounds like they are 
bulldogs that are people. They they walk yep. on two legs and they kind of gruff and bark. Um, Which were really on, really good animatronics, yeah. though. I was like, I was impressed by that. Like there was some good um, yeah. effects on those because like they have like really good movement in the mouths and mm -hmm. one of those bulldog people was played by um, kind of a somewhat famous little person, Tony Cox. Um, hmm. You would have seen him on Seinfeld as. Uh, Kramer's little friend uh, a couple times and um, mm. he was also on Bad Santa oh right, 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 right okay I remember him I remember him more on Seinfeld I didn't like Bad Santa that much but oh that was an awful movie <laughs> okay good <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand but, why people uh, say it's funny I was like this is terrible yeah I don't yeah I don't get it but um, they end up getting separated and Marge, or to get ready, they get separated to get ready and Marge meets the, her fish ladies, which are people with fish heads and they look like goldfish. No, maybe koi. They look more. They look like, like koi, koi. Yeah. They have like a yeah. slight elegance to them. Yeah. Um, and they're just chatting away about life and stuff and she finds out that one of the fish ladies is in love no is married to one of the bulldog guard guys named blatt yeah and but they're currently separated because you know they just not feeling it and they're not communicating very well which as marge points out you're not communicating very well yeah Marge is like i'll fix it for you <laughs> it was like very very like 1990s early cosmo advice of like you have to communicate more and i think that was I mean, the point in the story or the movie watching experience on this rewatch that i'm like yeah. what the hell are we doing here like, cause then you, cause it's a silly story in and of itself. But then, when yes. they introduce a somewhat actual story element that doesn't even really feature prominently, it's just like such unnecessary but specific detail about like mm -hmm. the guard that looks like a bulldog is in a relationship with the handmaid that looks like a fish, but they're estranged yeah. right now, and like yeah. the fish starts crying. And like yeah. March tries to console her. I'm like, yeah. did we just take a left turn somewhere and like into like a completely different thing? Like it it, no. it went from being silly to absurd and it no. was like a really like tough shift for me to like process at, at this old age. I think I was more flexible mentally when I was younger. And now I mean well <laughs> it's not no, it's just Marge being like because Marge is kind of going... It's it's a reflection on Marge's relationship, is what it is. Not that they're separated, which I would like to know. I actually kind of liked Marge and Dick's relationship, even at the beginning, because it was clear, like, to me, this is like, yes, this is a middle-aged relationship. There's always that one that's like, let's go do this, and there's the other one that seems like to not want to do it, but they'll still will do it, because the person they love wants to do it and that's dick like dick will complain the entire time but he's gonna make sure marge is out there parasailing like he's gonna make sure <laughs> she is yeah. having a blast no matter what and i think it's it maybe this could be why i like it because my parents are a lot like that <laughs> and more that my dad absolutely could care less about disney but mom and i love it so he will go and he will make sure we have a great time and we know just by day three he's going to be done with it but like <laughs> but he still does the things because he knows my mom loves it and he will do things he doesn't love because he knows my mom loves to do it so that could be why i really can't hate this movie all this much because i'm like yes no this is a realistic representation of later on in life when you still love each other whereas stay tuned it was very much he wasn't even trying it really mm. seemed like he didn't even really love her anymore he just loved tv in this one it's like different no this is just this is an older relationship that yeah. is kind of sort of lacking on communication, but still solid ground. Like, they're still okay. They're just not quite on the same level with things. Okay. No, that's fair. I definitely would agree with that assessment, especially with mm. uh, 
the fact that uh, you know he definitely spends the rest of the movie fighting for her and, and trying yeah. to get back to her. So uh, I'll give it that. It definitely has a different dynamic, and it shows that it's a much better relationship overall. It's just more, mm-hmm. I guess, the absurdity of some of the things that happen. Um, this is like, like it has elements of ridiculousness approaching like uh, a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, with like how ridiculous some of the bureaucracy is or like um take for instance as a, a perfect example uh, um like in the, the hitchhiker's guide movie because i don't remember how much yeah. the, the book compares um i'm just but, how are you comparing this to That's okay so so like you know how the vogons are super like i mean they're basically stupid um but they're like their whole thing is yeah. that they rely on bureaucracy and yeah, they there, rely on all the red There's tape, like yeah. a part okay. where like the Vogons will just keep marching in and shooting, you know, no matter what, even after like whatever they were yeah. after is gone, like they don't know when to stop. They just keep going. And mm-hmm. so there's a scene kind of similar to that in this movie <laughs> where like they point out, oh, like those people are so stupid. They'll keep picking up this bomb that will make them disappear just because yeah. it says pick me up. Yeah, and no. like that was yeah. that was I mean, kind of funny. It's a planet of idiots. Yeah. It's a planet of idiots, and yeah. you're like, yes, it's a planet of idiots. But like, it's the ab- absurdism of it because like even after they see their previous, I mean, they literally are down to the last man, and he says, "Oh, we're gonna need some reinforcements here." <laughs> we're gonna need so some just, Yeah, it's, it's. I'm gonna pick that thing it's up. It's so ridiculous, <laughs> um, and it it, is. it, it reaches a certain be. level of absurdism that I guess I wasn't in the mood for. Like twelve year old me was all for that kind of thing, I guess, because I was wow. really into Monty Python and uh, just you know yeah. things that make. No sense I thought were great like Monty Python's The Meaning of Life is one of my favorite movies to me just ah, because it's, it's just like you know things don't have to make sense there's just it, the point is the joke not how you get there yeah but I mean I prefer the Holy Grail but Meaning of Life is pretty good too but oh Holy Grail's good too yeah sure it's yeah one of their older ones um I would think we can all agree that nobody likes Life of Brian though <laughs> Yeah, that one I could only watch once and be like, I watched that. Yeah, pretty much. I laughed twice. <laughs> I laughed twice. So, um, I forgot where I was going with that. I went off on yeah. a tangent, as we usually tend to do. Um, I guess <clears throat> I, I feel like it wasn't absurd enough. It was relying a little too much on like the like the the design, which was a little too Nickelodeon for me. Like all of the sets mm-hmm. looked like they were straight out of like something you would see on the Nickelodeon TV show or like a game show. Like it, it looked like you know the the Hidden Temple or Nick Arcade with like yes. all of the tubing and the neon lighting and the green Everything slime. Wonderful about nineties childhood. <laughs> yeah. And it was great when I was a child in the 90s. Now I'm looking back on it and just thinking that is so unnecessary. Like, Oh my God. I just like, like literally 10 minutes ago, I was like, I liked the sets. I liked the costumes. They were great. (laughs) And 10 minutes later, John's like, the sets were just tagging. (laughs) Oh, and the vehicles. Let's not forget the vehicles looked like they were out of the Flintstones. Like with how... Maybe they were. It's a planet of idiots. I did. It a, is the Flintstones. I did appreciate that they filmed this at um, what is it called? I think it's called Vasquez Rock or something like that, um, mm-hmm. which is a famous location in sci-fi because they shot that episode of Star Trek there, where Captain Kirk fights the Gorn alien, like the reptile-looking yeah. thing, um, and that's no. also. <laughs> It was also featured in Star Trek Picard as a throwback. It was in Bill mm-hmm. and Ted's Bogus Journey. That's where the, the robot twins kill them. Um, mm. So the fact that they filmed a little bit there, which is also in California, was kind of nice. That's mm. as, as just a throwback. But some of it else was just kind of like, uh, like this. It's, yeah. it's, not, it's not outlandish enough. It's just enough that... Um, it it kind of didn't like hold up for me. Alrighty then, fine. I mean, and you're, you're wrong. It, it, but okay. I, I, I'll <laughs> accept that. I've been wrong in for most of my life. <laughs> I don't know. Like it does help that I was. I had a rough week. I had a really rough week. I needed a movie that I did not need brains to watch. It was a good thing this was not the week we were watching The Abyss because I would not have handled The Abyss if I was watching it this current week. 
work was long, work was hard. I needed just a dumb Planet of Idiots movie where mom and dad save the world. And that's what I got. So that's probably why I liked it. There we go. Who knows? You know, I don't know. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> currently in the film, <laughs> Marge is getting all prettied with the fish ladies and Todd is, or Todd, Todd is putting on a corset and changing out his hair pieces because that's one of my favorite things is how many hair pieces he has in this film. All of them are fun and ridiculous and over he, the top. Yeah, he's bald. It's just a fun time. I, he, he seems to have alopecia because he's completely bald and has no eyebrows and he has all mm-hmm. different kinds of hairstyles and wigs and yeah. everything. <laughs> Yeah, it's great. Um, but it doesn't like tell you that. It just constantly, in the first few scenes, it's just constantly changing out his hairstyles. And you're like, wait a minute, I don't remember the mustache. I don't remember this. And later on, you get that, oh no, he does just change out. Yeah, his he just has no hair whatsoever. Yeah. Um, Dick is getting thrown into a dungeon with a weird rat puppet thing, which looked really cool. And then he finds Raph chained to the wall, and the guy explains that he was the previous king who is considered the smartest of his people um and that he has a plan how to overthrow todd involving his son cirque the white bird and um dick just needs to look in his pants to find the plans (laughs) which which did have the first joke that made me laugh which was uh, when King Raph tells him, I'm like, I need you to go in my pants. And Dick you. says, I haven't been in jail that long. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been in jail long enough for that. I was like, uh, okay, yeah, that's, that feels more in my league. Oh, gosh. Um, as Dick is dealing with that, um, you hear the Todd song, which is this awesome choral piece, all dedicated to Todd, and it's wonderful. Um, Marge comes out in this really awesome pink dress outfit thing, um, and she's taking photos of everything, and Todd is basically trying to ask her to marry him. (laughs) And this is where I loved Marge's character because she literally just goes Todd are you insecure and just like flabbergasted what no no I'm not I just want to marry you and she just keeps asking for her husband and he basically tells her that he is in the dungeon and she doesn't really have a choice all that stuff and Marge is not good with that as Marge wouldn't be her costume was on point though like there were some like the, the, the oh, yeah. I think she has two different ones, and I was like, man, that actually looks pretty has, cool. Yeah, she has a pink one, and she does later on have a wedding gown that looks utterly amazing. Yeah, and it's like insanely awesome. So yeah, it's, yeah, I loved the costume work in this. Um, I feel like comedies don't get like representation not represented. I guess represented well for their costuming because people think, eh, it's just a comedy, but these costumes matched the characters and the sets and the, I don't know, the, just, they were just really elaborate and fun and like very hard to make. And I think like people think, oh, cause it's a co- like a comedy. You don't need to take the costuming seriously, but this, the costumes were serious. The costumes were perfect and very well done. I feel like they should have been nominated for an Oscar for <laughs> co- costuming. I'm sure they weren't, but I feel like they should have been. <laughs> Like, it was awesome. I'm Very sh- elaborate. I, I'm, I'm sure their snub by the Academy, Academy was uh, very controversial. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, but, um, so she gets mad at Todd for trying to get her married, so he ends up putting her in a room with a guard, and surprise, the guard is the bulldog Blatt. So she gets to have her talk with him. Um, and then Todd decides out of his anger that he is going to milk Dick's mind, which was where, when you pointed out, it's like Flash Gordon. I was like, oh my God, they did do this on Flash Gordon too, to the doctor character. And that's where I'm like, maybe this is actually a spoof of Flash Gordon and a couple other 
old sci-fi as I came out in the 80s. I feel like it really is an intentional parody. But I'm trying to think of what other ones it's parodying. But I haven't watched a ton of 80s sci-fi to really be like, oh yes, that's from that. No, there was something else that I felt was referenced. Planet of the Apes. Kind of. Um, a in little a bit, yeah, with like how yeah. the, the the human survivors that are outside are kind of living like cavemen, basically. Um, yeah. Yeah, that could, I could see that. Um, there were, yeah, there were definitely a few other knots in there um, to other stuff. But it was just kind of like a generic, yeah, I think the most you could say directly reference would be Flash Gordon. Mm-hmm. With, uh, you know, you have like the Ming the Conqueror or Ming the Merciless kind of... Uh, uh, analog and just in general not very um i want to say it's it's not too derivative like it has just enough originality um but yeah at the same time this is very much a a play on the whole Flash Gordon thing with them being I mean if you look at it beat for beat you have two earth well no yet even before that you have a you know distant conqueror that's targeting earth and prior to conquering earth you know two earthlings um you know accidentally well in this case not accidentally but you know are taken from the planet yeah. and then their their sheer presence causes a disruption in the power status quo that then yep. leads to the demise of the overlord and and yeah, so it's it's it's, it's very broad mind strokes. Milking. I mean, the mind milking, yeah. Which to say you're gonna okay. milk dick just sounds wrong. I think it's uh, even though that is technically what it happened. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna comment on that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he does the mind milking thing on Dick, um, which is basically just like a little shocky machine into his brain and then you see the images and then his thoughts are printed out in this paper and those thoughts are read out by I cannot remember the character's name but the actor's name is Wallace Shawn um, known as Rex from the Toy Story series and Vinzini Vinzini? from The Princess Bride so the Sicilian guy Yeah, Vinzini. says inconceivable yep Vinzini yeah I recognize, like, hey, it's Vincini. It's the um, inconceivable guy. The inconceivable guy. The, what is it, never deal with death when, wait, no. <laughs> never deal with a Sicilian when death is on the line. <laughs> like, yeah, that one. Yeah. Yeah. Good Princess Bride. Ah, oh, so good movie. So, we find out that he was reading, like, the thoughts were literally being printed out on a piece of paper, and he's reading them out loud. And he mm-hmm. sees that uh, Dick really does love his wife. And yeah. that, that moves him because it turns out that this character, whose name is Seabor, apparently, um, he is actually in love with King Rat's daughter, uh, yeah, Sam- Samaj? Yeah. Samaj? 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 Yeah. I don't know. She had a weird yeah. <laughs> And I can't wait till we get to that part. But um, yeah, so he takes pity on him and says, oh, you know, love must persevere and uh, like arranges for his, uh, you know, to his escape. Yeah, which again is also a Flash Gordon trope. And I was like, no, like, you know, you need to live. So you need to live. They uh, he he trades his uniform and like Wallace Shawn is a short man (laughs) and Jeffrey Jones is not. So. Yeah, that becomes a visual gag where he's now running around in this uniform that's very ill-fitting. Uh, yeah. But because all of the people are idiots, they're like, um, ah, "Sounds right." Yeah, I was like, "You need to go get a, a uniform that fits." And I was like, "Oh yeah, mm-hmm. I, I already ordered it." <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, he ends up. Let's see. As he's escaping. They basically all get into the same room somehow, Marge. Wait, no, hold on. Where am I at? Okay, yeah. So he's running away and he ends up in the sewer with the cute little mushroom peeps, but they are not so cute because they are like. They're like carnivorous. (laughs) They're carnivorous mushrooms. They have like two sets of mouths and with very sharp 
teeth, which my mom noted on this one that um, Dick says to one of the mushrooms, like, oh, aren't you a cute little fella? And then it goes to attack him, right? Um, right after he says that. And mom pointed out that that was from Jurassic Park. Although, didn't they come out, like, close to the same time? Jurassic so... Park came out a little bit later, I think. Like, yeah, that's also what I maybe two, but maybe a little bit. Yeah, I'm wondering, because, yeah, that's the same thing that... Um, <laughs> I oh, yeah, Jurassic Park came out in 93, a whole year later. Yeah, a whole year later, but um, the Newman character guy, that's so cool. The guy, the character who plays, no, the actor plays Newman in Seinfeld. Don't know his name. Wayne Knight. Because, like, uh, White Knight, what? Wayne Knight. Oh, Wayne Knight. I thought you said White Knight. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, okay, Wayne Knight is, says, like, aren't you a cute little fellow to that dinosaur that spits oil in his face. The Dilophosaurus, yeah. Dilophosaurus, See, yes. this is why I'm a good guy uh, to bring the trivia. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, apparently my mom is, too, because she was the one who caught that, not me. And I went, yeah, sounds about right. Um, Marge also escapes, and as she's running, she calls for Dick... And because Dick can hear her through the sewer, he manages to basically, he's like, Marge, I need to go save her. And he like pulls his way up through the sewer. It's a very beautiful moment. And you're like, oh, he loves her. It's cute. He just, you know, has a back that hurts. <laughs> so, um, but he gets up there. They all end up in Todd's room area. I don't know the place where I think the death ray is. And Marge, yeah, you get like a knee in the groin joke. It's great. Todd's voice gets high. It's hilarious. <laughs> I laughed because it's silly and it's funny. Um, Dick comes in to save her. He instantly gets beat up because he's outnumbered. Todd goes to shoot him. Marge seduces Todd. And you get this thing that like Dick believes what Marge is saying. <laughs> like, and He's all sad about it. And she's just like no, I'm trying to save your life, dumbass, but whatever. Um, and she basically stages it so that instead of getting shot, Dick just ends up being, I don't know, blown through a window. He still should have died, but he <laughs> didn't. He fell in the garage over by his car. The car has an alarm on it, so a bunch of guards come as soon as he tries to open his car. And he ends up trying to escape in what I thought originally was a tank. It ends up being some sort of flying craft plane thing. I don't know. Um, you do get the do joke in here as the guards are shooting at Dick getting into the plane. Um, they shoot one of their own guys in the back. And they just kind of shrug and continue shooting. Like, what you gonna do? A bunch of idiots. <laughs> um... Naturally, as he's flying out, Todd decides to shoot two missiles, and Dick manages to eject from the plane, And the but the missiles still hit the ship, so Marge thinks that Dick is dead. So, and now she's stuck in Todd's palace by herself, and Dick is stranded in the desert of Sp Spargo. Whatever this place is called. <laughs> Spango. Yeah. Spango. And this yeah. is the part where the movie finally picks up for me because he gets rescued by like these... Is this where it picks up for yes. you, John? Yes. The nomads <laughs> I wonder why. up here. Um, it could have something to do with Kathy Ireland like it making could. an appearance. Um, she is gorgeous. Which, but, yeah. fun fact, <laughs> you have you gotten to, in your Marvel cartoon rewatching recently, gotten to the Fantastic Four? Which one? Uh, I've, I've watched the 1994 Fantastic that Four. That one, yes. Yes, okay then. So that one, uh, Kathy Ireland plays a character called Crystal on the show. Oh my god, okay, yes. Okay, I thought her voice was familiar. Yeah, she's done a lot of voiceover work, but that's probably what I most remember her from, aside from a few other appearances here and there in movies. I thought she was a model. I could be wrong. She but like she could have been she um, um she i just remember been. her being in like a few funny movies i think later on she started doing like more like hallmark like channel type stuff and i don't think she's really done anything recently i haven't looked her up in a good long while 
Uh, but mm-hmm. yeah, we see that these are some of the citizens of Spengo, uh, including the two children of King Raph, who are basically taking refuge in the desert. Um, yep, pretending to be birds, in which they have basically eagle-like heads on them. <laughs> and how they pretend to be birds is they pretend that they're chickens with their eagle-like heads. So th- this got the second laugh out of me, because... <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's ridiculous. It's then, just... uh, yeah, when when <laughs> Dick asks them, it's like, like, they say, they tell them, it's like, oh, we dress up like these giant birds so that, you know, they don't, they'll think that we're just giant birds and not, you know, the people. And Dick's like, so do you have so... birds that are this big on your planet? And they're like, no. No. <laughs> I was just, like, okay, no. then. <laughs> like, all right. <laughs> So then they all kind of realize simultaneously, oh, yeah, that's a dumb idea. (laughs) Oh, we're idiots, aren't we? (laughs) It's like, wow, Dick, you're so wise. Yeah. (laughs) But then he he basically tells them, he's like, no, we need to, like, fight back and take over the palace because your father's still alive. And at that point, they're like, oh, well, well, no, before that, they think he's one of them because he's wearing the uniform or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then he has to convince them that he's not. Um, yep. And then they have a party, which, again, has more awfulness with that up-close, in-your-face style with the fisheye lens, where, like, I don't know why that was so popular back then. That was a very Nickelodeon thing, too. A lot of movies in the early 90s do that, where they're, they're just, like, right in your face. They just, like, zoom right in there. Um, yeah. And then, yep, I guess uh, Todd realizes that he's still alive or something, somehow, and they go after him um he realized it because okay so todd had a uh i can't remember what he was called like a right hand man a general i don't know hand of the king at, like a general um, athir yeah athir and athir didn't actually like todd he was going to you know kind of mutiny against him and he was going to help marge by Todd wanted to give Marge a love potion and instead the general goes to Marge and he's like look this is supposed to be a love potion it's not it's just water um but in order for this to work like you need to pretend that you're actually in love with Todd when I give it to you kind of thing and she's like okay and he continues on to saying that he knows that Dick is alive. I don't know how he knew that Dick was alive. I don't know if I missed something or what, but he knew that Dick was alive in the desert that he managed to eject before um, the plane was hit by the missiles. And as he's explaining this, Todd comes into the room and that's how Todd found out that Dick was possibly alive and he sends troops into the desert to go find him, basically. And Todd also gives Marge the love potion that is not really love potion and she pretends to love him and then he also gives it to the general guy and he also pretends to love him and he says that he's going to kill the general guy by putting him in the death ray before he shoots earth so when he shoots earth that's when the general will die although before that he said death is too good for a traitor like you and then he sentences him to death and I was like but you said be, it was too good for must him. Must be some of that <laughs> idiotness, like creeping in. I know. I guess. Yeah, just <laughs> a little bit of that idiotness. Um, you also, within this time, you get that scene in which Todd is trying on his wigs, and he gets to like an Elvis Presley type wig, basically with that big pff, curly poof in the front. And he goes, mutton chops or goatee to the two twin guards. And the first twin guard says, mutton chops. And Todd says, "Mm, no, goatee, shoot yourself in the head. So he shoots himself in the head. And then he goes to the second twin and he's like, mutton chops or goatee. And because it's a plan of idiots, the twin goes, mutton chops. (laughs) And... (laughs) And just goes ahead and shoots himself in the head um, before Todd can tell him to. And then Todd goes in the mirror and he's like, you know what? Mutton chops do look better. (laughs) I think they were right. And you're like, oh gosh, dude, what? But let's see. Then 
Oh, yeah. And then during the love scene, you get that very wonderfully awkward kiss between Todd and Marge. Which is just... I don't... It was just not a necessary kiss to see. <laughs> yeah, that looked really... Um, like, that should have bumped it up to an R rating. Oh, it reminded me of something. There's, like, another movie that does, like, a kissing scene like that, where it's, like, it's just tongue. Like, open mouth tongue. Like, Dumb and Dumber or something. <laughs> like, there's some... That might be Dumb and Dumber. What is it? I, like, I can picture it. It is, like, two idiots kissing. So maybe it is Dumb and Dumber. I can't remember. It's gonna drive me nuts, though. Because mm. it's... Or like, Gasmo also has some really gross kissing. Okay, I don't know what that is, and I don't know if I want to know what that it's, is. It's from the guys that made South Park. It's a it's like a comedy about making porn. Oh, okay. All right. Actually, that it actually has watch. very little nudity for what it's about, which is funny. It's like kind of like a meta joke about it. Hmm. Oh, okay. Um... The guards go to find Dick in the desert, and this is where you get that scene that you mentioned before, where Dick basically puts a, what do they call it, a disappearing grenade? I don't a, li- know. a light grenade, I think is what it was. A light grenade, that's what they call it, a light grenade, and it's basically like this very pretty silver grenade. Which kind of looked like it. the holy hand grenade a little bit. It does kind of look like the holy hand grenade, um, and it says on it, do not pick up. No, it says that's pick it up. Says on it, it says pick me up. Oh, it says pick me up. Yes. And that's why they okay. kept picking it up. That's why they kept picking it up. Okay. So it says pick me up. Yeah, that is, that is what it says. Um, and Tick is basically like, I hope these people really are a bunch of idiots as he's planting the trap. They also have like, it's like a camp set up and they have a sign where the grenade is and basically where Dick was supposed to be sleeping and the, the people made a sign that says human sleeps here or something like do not touch human sleeps here (laughs) like something like that so the guards knew instantly where to start looking um they pull over the covers of the little sleep sack i don't know and there's the pick me up like grenade and the guy literally says oh it's a like grenade and they're like what and he picks it up to say it's a like grenade don't (laughs) touch it (laughs) and he disappears and I like then the next guy. I like how most the of them have that reaction too. Like right before it disappears, them they're like, "Oh wait." <laughs> oh wait, yeah. And then the yeah, because the next guy right it was like this idiot, <laughs> and he goes and does basically the same thing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like yeah, this is this is our future probably. But um, <laughs> Marge gets in her okay so you find out that dick's plan is basically the trojan horse but instead of the trojan horse it's a trojan big statue of todd kind of thing that's how he's going to get in it because of course if it's a planet of idiots they don't know anything about trojan horse horse that is hard to say trojan horse (laughs) and (laughs) he thinks it's gonna work um meanwhile marge is in her wedding dress that actually like looks so cool like I would cosplay it but I would never be able to make it because I don't know how to sew but it's got this big cape thing that goes up and behind her head and in it are these little I don't even know but these little circle dangle things that like move every time she moves but it just looks so neat if you haven't seen this movie try to find Marge's wedding dress (laughs) from mom and dad save the world and try to see how it moves because it just it's so pretty and it's white and it's black and it's crazy fun sashes and it just it's movement to it and marge looks amazing which marge i can't remember the name of that terry something terry gar yeah yeah terry gar who is oh, okay igna igna from young frankenstein inga i think was her name yeah inga yeah there you go inga from young frankenstein the rolling in the head <laughs> yes, yes. That's the one. <laughs> yeah um which gorgeous ah oh, she's such a pretty actress which i think actually when i was looking her up i think she also voices for a marvel tv series i think she voices 
as Ogress in the uh, Incredible Hulk. I think it was her. Um, Might have been somebody else. Yes. Uh, Which I haven't watched that one yet, but. What was her name? We were just talking about um, Kathy Ireland. Yeah, she also plays Ogress in uh, one of the Hulk cartoons. I think it was the one from the late 90s, like 97? Yeah. Yeah, somewhere around there. Um, so I'll probably get to that one soon. I'm on 1994 Spider-Man right now. Woo! Yeah, Another make sure Spider-Man. make sure you go back uh, to the beginning of that spider arm situation because he'll cross over with the X Men and it's the same voice actors. It's yeah. just different animation style, so it looks a little weird. Yeah, I saw it. Oh, okay. I saw parts of it. Yeah, I did. I did see that. The actually whole the six arm Spider Man thing. We're getting on a tangent, but um, the six arm Spider Man thing is actually I think like a thirteen part. It takes up half the first season, yeah. it seems like. Because Blade is also in it and all that. I'm like, yeah. oh my god, With, figure this out. Like, and, what is happening? And Morbius, the living vampire. Morbius. And... Which was good because now I got Morbius before I see Morbius. Because I think which, they're still doing that film. Which I suggested <laughs> a long time ago, too. I was like, oh yeah, if you want to just get like a crash course on who Morbius is, watch this episode. And yeah. then one of our other fellow geek leaders was like, well, actually, if you really want to get to know the character, you have to go watch this episode of this and read this issue of this comic. And I was like, try oh, to keep yeah, it simple. Right. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah that's no, if you want to write a dissertation on it, sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, uh, vampires, right? Living but, vampire. Because he doesn't, Yeah, it's interesting to note well, again, too much tangential stuff, but <laughs> too much tangential. because it because it was for a cartoon, he couldn't be a regular vampire that like sucks blood through your like throat by with his mouth. They had to yeah. create this separate thing where he has these little like suction things on his hand. Yeah. And by the way, yeah. more creepy than getting. So- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I that's take. That's approaching Getting some bit on like, the neck that's over like, sucker fish on a hand. <laughs> that's approaching Lovecraftian <laughs> levels of creep right there. Yeah. It's like, not better, no. But, you know, it, at least it went around the censors. But, yeah. So, anyway, um, we're back at the thing. Yeah. Back at the thing. We're at the wedding. Um, Todd tells him to skip to the ending of the wedding. The ending of the wedding. So, the I do is part. He says, I do. Marge doesn't say, I do. Um, when there is a knock on the door and it's announced that there is a statue for Todd. Todd says it is clearly a trick because it doesn't look like him because he is very much handsome but still says to bring it inside anyway so that everybody can see that he is more handsome than the statue. Um, Once they get the Trojan Todd inside, um, the... They go to sneak out of it and realize that the... one of the idiot people um, sealed the door shut so they can't easily get out of their Trojan Todd. Um, so they have to bust out by, like, knocking it over. And Dick literally pops out of the head piece of Todd. And there you go. And he crashed the wedding. Um, Marge very quickly gets pulled away by some guards. And a fight starts between the people and the guards. And well, I guess Raph's people, King Raph's people, and the guards. Um, the princess and I can't remember his name. Sipor, Sipor, little short guy, Wallace Shawn. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, they get reunited in a hallway. It's adorable. They're so cute. Um, Dick chases after Marge and. Todd goes to sh- shoot his death ray, so they all end up in the death ray room. Um, a fear is strapped into the death ray. Dick and Todd fight. It's hilarious because they both suck at fighting. So it's like the opposite of the Princess Bride, kind of, where they just both suck at fencing instead of both really good at fencing. Um, and. Marge ends up somehow freeing herself because she manages to pull a sword out of something with just her teeth, which is very impressive, and (laughs) cuts herself out of her bindings, and she helps Dick beat Todd just in time 
to stop the death ray from going off. Yay. Because it was in 60 seconds of Spargor seconds, which I guess is slower <laughs> than Earth seconds. <laughs> I'm just never going to say the planet's name. It's, right. I, I don't know just, what it is. You know, I think it's better to just come Spagor. up with what you think it is. That's even yeah. more entertaining. Yes. Um, so they save the day. Todd ends up falling down into the sewers where the mushroom people are. So he's going to get eaten by a bunch of cute little mushrooms. And yeah, there you go. It's cute. Dick did a lot. He he got over his back pain to save his wife and save the world, even though nobody knows about it. So and the, the movie ends with them um, doing that evening, showing their slides <laughs> of the vacation to, I guess, the, her their daughter and boyfriend. Daughter, boyfriend, and son, Younger Alan. son. And they're just yeah, like, young... like, they don't know what, what to make of it. The... They're just like, okay. And they're just like super like, just like, yeah, so this is, you know, this was black yeah, this is with me. And um, yeah, that whole thing. Wow. I wouldn't yeah. say it was a complete waste of my time. I've definitely it wasn't. done was worse. But uh yeah, it, it's one of those that definitely doesn't hold up. As I, 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 the nostalgia didn't carry it through for me, so it wouldn't uh, be something. Yeah, wow, that was a night roll. <laughs> 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 yes, I'm I can see your face right now. <laughs> um, I forgot the audience can't. You could have. You could have let the audience not know. <laughs> uh, no, they they must know what the reaction was. Um, so yeah, I mean it's. I think if you watch it as a kid, or if you're a kid at heart, if you if if you're still a Marge and not a dick, then you I'm will Marge. <laughs> you'll enjoy this movie. Yeah, I think I'm too much of a dick right now. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No, it's just it's just a fun time. I don't think it's the best movie. It's not the best comedy. It's just. It's hilarious in his, in its absurdity. It's just it's so absurd. It's yeah. doesn't make sense. But I don't it will think never it, make logical sense. I, I don't it think it's absurd to. enough. No, it's, see, I think it's just the right amount absurd. It it's a family <laughs> movie too. Like it's got those like kind of sort of crude jokes in it. But no, it's not I'll give you it's that. A it's it's family more of, level. Yeah, it's comedy. more definitely yeah. more family friendly than um than stay tuned <laughs> yeah more family friendly than stay tuned i imagine it's kind of along the lines of like space balls or like in comedic style like space balls is better but yeah in comedic style it's very much like this space balls um, are just lean and i don't think we set this on the air i think we were having like the pre-recording conversation but like this mm -hmm. movie was written by like a couple of writers who've done really good stuff like um it was uh, if i can remember here chris matheson and ed solomon who are mm. the writing duo that did bill and ted's excellent adventure bogus journey and face the music along with um mm, between yeah. the two of them they've also written um men in black the goofy movie and a few other like high concept comedies so like I totally think that it wasn't the writer's fault on this. I think, honestly, this falls on the director for why I th didn't really end up satisfied with it. Because we both looked at his IMDb page, and he's done like a couple of live-action movies, but almost everything else he's done is TV. And he's still working. Like Up until now, he's doing things like Stargirl, um, The Rookie, Timeless, American Gothic. Like He's still Ooh, a timeless. working director um and producer he's done all kinds of things heroes melrose place smallville nash bridges i guess um but like lucifer batwoman nancy drew like he's he's still working but it's all tv stuff i think like his movie outings have been very few and far between and i don't think he's done anything since this one hmm. well 
<laughs> I guess film. I don't even know how yeah. to do it. I don't know. It's just it's hilarious. It's a fun time. It's if you're having a rough week, watch this movie. <laughs> or a movie like it. Just you don't need to think. It's a planet of idiots. They get magnetically pulled to a planet very far away and, you know, don't instantly, you know, die in the vacuum of space in their little sedan. Like Well, those cars are airtight, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised there wasn't a joke about them trying to roll down the window or something, but <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point oh i did want to mention that there was a really awful cut at one point uh, right before the magnet beam steals them away um they uh-huh. start feeling like the car's going out of control and you could see it like yeah. on the outside it kind of starts to swerve yeah. those were very obvious stunt people inside the car from that angle oh yeah i was like yeah. what they didn't I, even try yeah i had to rewind it because i'm like it's no way that they were that careless so to be fair, that still happens to this day because I recall Wonder Woman quite recently. What was the second one called? Wonder Woman 1984? Yeah. Okay, with right. the kids. The, on the role ground. that she yeah. does with the kids. That was, they didn't even try with that one either. Which okay. kind of, it's like, of course, like, that's, that's fair. Fake, I mean, <laughs> and, and I guess that's more inexcusable for Wonder Woman because A, it's like more modern and recent and they have yeah. the budget for that. This one, I guess it's more excusable because like, eh, who cares? You know, it's, it's not a movie that's being watched for its artistic merit or production design. Yeah. But still, I just, it took me out of it for a split second. I was like, wait, what? I was like, that was totally a stunt guy right there. It wasn't even like, it was a bad wig too. Like that's how it, what drew me out of it. It was like a super bright blonde wig. And the character's yeah. not even blonde. He's like redhead. Yeah. Um, I think this is also a movie that benefits from being in standard um, frame. Not frame. Oh, yeah. What's it called? Resolution. Standard definition yeah. instead of HD. <laughs> yeah. Just because you don't notice those details as much, basically. Yeah. So they didn't have to work as hard. Whereas nowadays, yeah. you really need to work hard for people to not see the flaws in the cinematography there's, and editing yeah i think the, there's like a subreddit that points out that like things you didn't notice in standard definition one of the ones that was the most jarring for me was in the original ninja turtle movie there's a scene where donatello is laughing and his mouth mm-hmm. opens wide enough that you can actually see the actor's see? like face inside and it looks yeah. so creepy <laughs> yeah it looks like one of those see? parasite fish that has like a smaller fish inside its mouth it's really weird looking yeah yeah, some things should be watched in what they were filmed in. I will kind of agree with some directors in that. It's like, yeah, you should yeah. probably watch it and how it was intended to be released. That's why um, you can only watch Justice League in 4x3 from now on. You can't watch it widescreen. Oh, God. Now that was an eye roll. Yeah, I was like, whoa. <laughs> like, are you having an aneurysm? <laughs> <laughs> Should I call just, the doctor? Uh, I'm done with the Snyder Cut. I watched it so I can hate on it. <laughs> oh, hey, at least there was, was no needless scene of the Flash falling on Wonder Woman's boobs in this version. <laughs> yeah, that was totally a Joss Whedon uh, I, for- I forgot about that from the first one. I forgot about a lot of things from the first one because the first one was also forgettable. I didn't need to relive it and i basically just did only this time i got a swedish girl sniffing a sweater i bet you it was real longing real briny too with all that seawater he's got to be carried <laughs> i mean it probably smelled good because the ocean does smell great but like <laughs> well not on low tide <laughs> you know i we could That's debate so for hours what alcoman must smell like but how about where people can find us? <laughs> oh, yeah. How about that? John, where can you be found to um, discuss how Aquaman smells? <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, well, probably like a Krabby Patty. Uh, I, if you want to discuss <laughs> anything with me, you can so reach out delicious. to me on Twitter. I am at Magic Bollocks. And we just did an experiment. If you type in Magic Bollocks in Google... The first couple of results will be me. So, it's... This uh, is so crazy. I can't <laughs> believe nobody has... Like, you're so original. Magic bollocks is That's, original. I mean, <laughs> sometimes you just gotta reach deep down and pull something 
figuratively out of the anus and it's voila there it is yeah i guess uh, i would say mine's not as original <laughs> but because it's mainly just my name um you can find me on twitter as jm bailey writes woohoo um for archives of this podcast and other podcasts that we are on um such as the geeks watch um, you can find those on geekalitemedia.com. You can also find Geekalit Media as at Geekalit Media on Twitter and Instagram and facebook.com forward slash Geekalit Media. Um, if you would be so kind or have a few dollars to spare a month, we do have a Patreon page. Um, that's where you can find some exclusive behind the scene content as well as extra videos and all that fun stuff and early access to some things as well um that'll be on patreon as geekly media um oh wherever you are listening to this please remember to rate review and subscribe that will also help us out a lot um until then always remember to geek Geek out. out This concludes our broadcast. Peace.